Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the YouTube channel. The one thing that I absolutely love the most is the engineering side of the things. The engineering side of the thing is something that gives you so much of clarity of how a product is being designed, built or being scaled up. This is one of my favorite subject and I really love to study more about it. And a lot of people just say, where should I learn about it? Where can I find the inner engineering of a product? I'm really interested in this product. I want to know how they are being built or how they are being scaled up or what are the problem they are commonly facing and how they are addressing it. Now, of course, no product is going to show you the inner trade secrets behind it, but there is always enough information directly from the people who are building it, scaling it up, and you can read about them. This is my favorite study topic, and I call this as knowing the engineering side of it. Now, one such thing really caught my attention that how this thing can actually be studied. And by the way, if you are really looking forward to scale up your engineering side, you're looking up for to learn about system designs, how the crazy products are being built or scaled up, I highly recommend you to check out the blogs by the official popular websites like uh, there's a Discord engineering blog, there's a Hashnode engineering blog, uh, there's even a Netflix engineering blog. And it's not always that you'll always find some juicy information, but there is always something, uh, a paragraph, or maybe something which makes you curious about, okay, this is the vague big picture of how things are being done. And I think that's the most interesting part. Now in today's video, also I would like to take you into the journey about reading an article which gives you a big picture overview about some crazy stats of scaling up the things and you will absolutely love this. Now, so without uh, actually beating up the bushes, let me take you onto the website blog itself and together you and me are going to study this and we'll actually try to deduce what they are doing, what's the big picture overview looks like and how things are actually being done onto a scale level. By the way, we also have a target uh, comment for this one as well. We're targeting for 150 comments. Uh, let's see if we can make this an achievable target. I'm pretty sure you are loving the channel, you're enjoying this, so hit that subscribe and let me help. Uh, please help me to complete the comment target. It really, really is a motivation factor for me. So let me take you onto the screen and let's go ahead and study about it. So. Uh, here's the screen. Uh, so this is the company known as Device and what really caught my attention, I was actually checking out some of the resources. I'll tell you what I was looking forward. And this is where I saw that fundamentals, how Device generates 20 million lines of code and daily. Like, can you see, I hope you can understand the scale that we are talking about, 20 million lines of code daily. Uh, that's a crazy scale altogether and it's not easily achievable. So first of all, let's appreciate that an Indian company is doing it. Uh, that's really already crazy. But by the way, what I was looking forward in searching, uh, they actually publish a lot of blogs on React Native as well as on Flutter. So if you really want to look forward to some, get some free resources to learn, uh, they're not an ed tech company, but still they post a lot of uh, juicy information about like, for example, how to connect your Flutter app to a Postgres database. Uh, there's a nice information about that, how that's being done step by step along with the code tutorial. Pretty nicely they are looking forward and they are doing it. So in case you are interested in Flutter or React Native, uh, there's a lot of articles around it, all free. Uh, you can just try them out. I was looking forward for one of them. Uh, this is when I actually, this, this caught my attention. I think this needs to be shared with all of you that uh, what they really want to share or say about their 20 million lines of code uh, that they are generating daily. So uh, this is the big picture overview of how they are actually dueling up. Uh, they actually, all, all the companies uh, really like to show off how many users they are actually serving, what they are doing in their application, what's the MAO, monthly active users and all of them. So this is how they actually go for 125. Actually, let me zoom this a little bit. So how they are looking forward to actually have 125K uh, users, that's a lot of users, and how they are actually uh, generating more than 20 millions of lines of code every single day. Uh, they are processing 3 million screens. They have actually already processed 3 million screens. So uh, in one thing that you really need to understand in the world of this data science and AI, uh, there are two things which you should always be worried about the amount of data and the quality of data. If you have those things being taken care, you can really train your model well, you can generate really good, solid, and reliable output, whether that's in code or any other information, that's the first thing you always look forward. Now, apart from this, let me actually shrink this a little bit so that we can actually move this. Yeah, now, now it's much easily visible. I can zoom this, okay. Uh, what really caught my attention is, this is the process, I've already tried and test them out. So this is their motivation about how they actually built up. I'm more interested into this part, the process overview. 
Okay, this is the part where I want to really study how they are actually doing it. Uh, the process of turning Figma design into functional code is a journey of precision and technology proficiency. And they are doing this uh, with the Figma URL, Figma authentication, and a lot of clean and efficient code. Okay, let's see how they are actually doing it. Our user begins the journey through the device platform or our dedicated Figma plugin. Okay, so they have their Figma plugin. So I'm assuming uh, that based on that Figma plugin, you just click on it and it starts processing your screens and start writing code as best as they can. Uh, these entry points are designed to be user-friendly and intuitive, ensuring a smooth start of the screen processing. Okay, that's nice. The next step is authentication and Figma URL submission. Uh, once on our platform, user provides their Figma URL along with the necessary authentication token. Okay, that's good so that nobody can abuse it. This is where you learn smaller details about, okay, this is where the authentication should begin uh, so that nobody can actually misuse your system or abuse your system. So good work there. Uh, good learning for me. Uh, this step is crit uh, critical for secure access to their Figma resources, laying the groundwork for the subsequent processing stage. Okay, how does your processing? Oh, diagrams, I love them. Uh, processing a Figma resource with AWS Lambda. Okay, this also reveals that how they are utilizing uh, AWS Lambdas. Uh, so there's a serverless architecture that's a little bit going on there in case you don't know. This is exactly the point I would really like to do a little bit research on AWS Lambda if I don't know there. This is how I study all these blogs. In this case, I know that AWS Lambda is serverless platform offered by AWS in which you don't have to worry about servers. Of course, servers are there, but you don't worry about managing them. So this is really uh, amazing. Uh, by the way, AWS Lambda is really a great choice for a lot of such flows because they provide a lot of requests, probably more than a million requests uh, for free. <laughs> and uh, after that, even the pricing makes sense. It's really affordable. Upon successful authentication, the magic begins. Okay, we utilize AWS Lambda to interact with Figma APIs, processing the Figma resources. Lambda's serverless architecture allows us to handle these tasks efficiently, scaling dynamically to the demand of operation. Uh, yes, of course, this makes sense because maybe there's a lot of Figma plugins that comes up. Uh, Lambda's actually automatically scales up. Obviously, you have to pay, but they automatically scales up to however you want and automatically scales down. You don't have to worry about these things. So this is the diagram that they have given. So this is the Figma plugin, uh, this is the device resources, and they are all connected via API gateway through, of course, Lambdas, and there's a load balancer. Uh, Figma plugins can talk directly to their Lambda, and somehow they get into the databases. So they have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, four microservices. One microservice is specifically for processing uh, the Lambdas through the Figma plugin, which stores them either on Mongo or Postgres. Uh, I hope they, are, I'm pre assuming that they are using both of the databases for specific use cases. We'll see if they actually explores a little bit in front of us. Then there is a microservice specifically to design the custom models and there's a microservice for the algorithm. So they have trained, I'm assuming they have trained their data on some of their custom models in-house uh, screens to process because the buttons and the inputs, they all look kind of a similar ones. Uh, yes, of course, there are differences in the colors, the paddings and the rounded corners, but ultimately they are just input fields and there are buttons. Uh, I actually talked to their CTO once and they said they have so many of their customized algorithms uh, that helps them to process things faster. So they have actually, they are not using the pre-built algorithms. They have actually some in-house designed algorithms uh, by their amazing engineering team. And then there is separate microservice. Uh, once all of this process is done, there is a separate microservice which helps you to build the code and they're shipping the code through an AWS S3 bucket. So I think this already gives me a really big picture overview of how things are actually done on a really big scale. Of course, not nitty gritty details, but enough of that if I wanted to start or I want to build, a, I'm building something related to that similar, uh, that's a great, great resource to share. Let's see. Uh, the step four is AI-based component identification with GPU-powered models. Uh, that's interesting. In this phase, our custom AI models running on powerful GPUs kicks into action. These models are designed for AI-based component identification and tagging. Uh, this is one of the most important thing about the tagging, in case you don't know. Uh, whenever something is similar is being designed, when you are actually uh, seeing an image, you want to uh, check that image is cat or dog, 
there needs to be a pre-trained data which is already tagged. So based on that information, we can tag the new images. Uh, same kind of tagging is required in these kinds of plugins as well so that they can identify whether something is a button or an che a checkbox or a radio button or an input field or something else. So ensuring that each element of the Figma design is accurately recognized and categorized. Uh, this accuracy will be highly dependent of how many screens you are testing it on, how many screens you are training it on. And since they have already processed like crazy amount of screens, I think their accuracy is already increasing day by day. Uh, this is the early movers advantage. Okay, uh, application of 2000 plus custom in-house algorithms. Oh, that's, that's crazy number. <laughs> Uh, next, we apply over, like, I, I really want to see that somebody from the company would like to uh, mention this. How much time does it take to design each algorithm? And what do you really uh, take care about in this algorithm? Is it fast processing? Is that accuracy? Uh, like, how, how are you making this possible? Like, 2,000 algorithms. Have you filed some patent or something for them? Uh, custom in-house algorithms developed specifically uh, for more precise identification and processing of the components. Uh, I think this is their trade secret uh, because the way how they are able to properly identify the things, I think this is their meat, meat and potato. This is the trade secret. The extensive suite of algorithm is our <laughs> secret sauce. I should have read that earlier. <laughs> I should have read that earlier. Uh, enabling us to achieve unparalleled accuracy in our design to code conversion. List of component device supports. Uh, as I mentioned, I like that. There's too much of the list. There's too, too much of the list. OTP view. Uh, circle image view, line, have I used all of them? Probably not. That, that's a two, is this endless scroll? <laughs> oh, there's a dot, 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 and we are working to incorporate more component in each print. This is already too much, man. This is already too much. Okay, so a lot of lambdas and all of that, then they have applied custom algorithms. Then user interaction and customization of our micro front-end panel. Our user then engage with our micro front-end panel where they can perform a variety of actions. This include API integration, uh, navigation adjustment, modification and design or component. Hence, they create, update, delete components as they need. Uh, this is a little bit jargon to me. Uh, probably I'm not skilled enough to understand this at this point of time. I need to do a little bit more research on this uh, six part. Uh, probably I'll try to use it more and check this out more. Uh, code generation storage. Now this is really crazy. Once the user finalizes their input, uh, our code generation spring into action, translating the process data into clean and efficient code. This code is then stored securely on a personal secure AWS S3 bucket, ensuring its availability and integrity. I think that's a really good take uh, because a lot of people these days, once they are actually generating these things, uh, probably might think that we need to actually put this entire generated code in our database so that we can actually ship it on fly. But this is a different take. And this is a great new learning as well that you can actually process this entire code and code can be placed into an S3 bucket. And whenever you need that, you can load that code and just uh, ship it to the user. Ah, great. I think that's a different take that they have taken. And I would keep that as a, my learning resource that, hey, this is also one scenario that can be done. Ah, good one. Uh, final output, uh, download, sync with GitHub, or use with the VS Code extension. The final step in the journey is the delivery of the output to our user. They can download the generated code directly, sync it with the GitHub repository. I've seen this one quite a lot, sync with the GitHub repository. By the way, uh, GitHub APIs actually allows you to actually give this feature to your user quite nicely. That let's just say you have a code, you have some code editor that you have go, uh, put up for the Monaco or any code editor, uh, you can actually provide GitHub APIs behind the scene and give them a uh, sync with their repositories. This is really nice and easy to do, comparatively easy to do. And, uh, or use it with our VS Code extension. This flexibility allows them to integrate the output seamlessly into their existing workflow. Uh, so this is how you actually learn. It's not about just grasping all the knowledge in one thing. This is not a course. This is reading the blogs and learning on the go. In each of these blogs, sometimes you learn one or two things new. Sometimes you don't learn anything new. But this is how you collectively build knowledge for the future. And I think this is the best way of going through with it. Uh, then there's a lot of future decision and vision, simplifying complexity. I think this is, uh, this is finally all being done. And I can zoom this out a little bit because I saw. They actually gives this process motivation as a scrolling on the right-hand side as well, but I prefer to read this end-to-end. -end. 
Uh, by the way, there is also a nice one here. I saw there's a lot of articles about Flutter to React Native, how to implement React A-B testing in projects. Like this is nice, how to implement A-B testing. If you have never gone through with this, uh, this is really nice of how things are being done. And what I really like about is there is a code. I can actually just follow this article, have this code with me, and I can try this out. If it doesn't work, I'll definitely write comment that, hey, this one is not working, I need to learn more. Uh, but this is something really nice. Uh, I would definitely love to make more videos on similar topics. I read a lot of these uh, Dropbox blogs, Hashnode blogs, engineering blogs by Netflix. All these big scalable companies, they actually share a lot of good information, which gives you a different perspective of, should I use AWS Lambda? Should I not use AWS Lambda? What could be the use cases? And in each one of them, you learn something about system design. System design is something that you need to learn through the practicalities and through reading the things. Yes, of course, you can get started, a quick hack, get started with a course or with a book, but I think the real system design knowledge comes from reading these articles whenever you get the free time. This is the fun of the engineering side of the things. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, article reading with me. I'll definitely make more in the future. If you have something more or something which actually caught your attention or eyes, uh, just please drop me up uh, that link in my Discord. I would definitely make, love to make a video about it. And uh, definitely that's really the fun part of the engineering side. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget the comment target that we have on this video and uh, just wait for the next video. It's gonna be dropping up very soon. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that and let's catch up in the next video.